five verses. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speak the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changes not. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Father God, have a blessing on his word. Father God, come before me and pray. Hallelujah. As you to bless the sick and the healed sick. Lord, we ask you to bless this great nation. Bless our children. Direct him in the path that he should go. That we might lead this great nation in peace. Lord, we ask you to touch the In the name of Jesus, we ask that you touch him yes. and give him strength to go to this business. In the name of Jesus. And our Father, we join in. Hello be thy name.
Sunday, December 8th, 2011, from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., Lawrence E. Mew Moon Funeral Home, Homegoing Celebration, Holy Ghost Church Ministries, Friday, December 9th, 2011, Family Hour, 10.30 a.m., Funeral, 11 a.m. Women's Day, December 18th, 2011, at 5 p.m. at Greater Friendship Azusa Ministries. You and your church family are cordially invited to be our very special guests for our Women's Day service. The topic, Women Working for the Lord. First Lady Donna Burrell is the speaker. On Sunday, December 11, 2011, at 4 p.m., Solid Foundation Church of God in Christ is having an afternoon program entitled The Seven Ups. Please come out and be with us and see what Seven Ups is all about. First Lady Donna Burrell is one of the speakers. Thank you. 
to all of our associate elders. Amen. We're glad to see Minister Riley come in. Know the heavy burden, but God is well able. Amen. We thank the Lord. We praise him. And before I get into anything, it's a significant day today. We have been pastor and wife for 16 years. Preparing for all of those who 
who truly believe and follow his son. We got to be real. God sees right into our heart. God's purpose is to show man that he can be saved from the terrible things that are coming up on the earth. God wants man to know that he can be saved while there is still time. There's going to come a time that there won't be time, but there's still time for us to repent. God's purpose is to lead people to repentance and salvation, to lead them to the glorious inheritance of the great redemption that is to be given to all true followers of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. The last church that he addressed was the church of Laodicea. It's the period at the end of the church age. Laodicea means the people speak. Listen to that. The people speak. They care more about man's words than the word of the Lord. Doesn't that sound like it's in the day that we're living now? Laodicea was a city that was extremely wealthy. It was a financial and a banking center. It was a clothing manufacturing center. It was the location of a famous medical center, renowned for the famous eye salve that it produced. Back in those days, there was much blindness, and they had come up with a salve that could cure some types of blindnesses that was in that day. The church at Laodicea, and this is in Revelations 3, starting about the 14th verse, somewhere in there. The scripture is from the 14th through the 20th verse. I'll only read the 20th verse. But the people, the saints at Laodicea, they said, I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And they didn't know, Christ said, that they were poor, they were wretched, they were miserable, they were blind, and they were naked. That's the church that's lukewarm. Christ said, Jesus in his complaint of them said, you're neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm. So I'll spew you out of my mouth. Christ didn't want to have anything to do. We know how it is for lukewarm stuff. We want it either hot or cold. It's nauseating. It just doesn't taste right. But being lukewarm, the church was half committed to Christ. They stretched rituals and ceremonies and programs as a way to please God. They were only half committed to proclaiming that Jesus is the Son of God. When we can't testify, when we stand in the midst of evil, when we know wrong is going down, and we can't say what the truth is, we're half proclaiming that God is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Son of God. And in Romans 12 and 1, it tells us we've got to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. So a lukewarm church is only half committed to proclaiming that Jesus is the Son of God. They're only half committed to teaching the Word of God. They're only half committed to evangelism and mission. And many of our churches have lost sight of evangelism and mission, a principal part of why, called, why God called us. Thank the Lord we are on the road to uh, getting into evangelism and mission. It's a church that's half committed to stressing holy and pure living for Christ. We're talking about that lukewarm church that's in Laodicea in Revelations. But it's in the world today. Most Christians are lukewarm, lukewarm. There's some that's on fire for God, some that's very cold, but the majority of the group is lukewarm. It's a church that's half committed to self-denial and sacrificial living. It takes, takes self-denial to come in here and lay before the Lord in fasting and prayer for three days. It takes self-denial to come into the Bible study, to come here on Sunday morning, to do what God has required us. Many of us have not took the time to find out what is my motivational gift, that I can give God a more perfect service, that I can be about the, his job of doing what he's assigned me to do. 
It's a half committed church. The warning is that God will spew us out of his mouth because of their false profession, saying that they are rich and in need of nothing. That's one of the reasons God's going to screw us out of his mouth. We need him in everything. We can't do anything. The scripture said we live, we move, we have our being in him. And he's going to spew us out of his mouth because of our true condition. He said we're wretched, miserable, blind, poor, naked. We can't what he wants us to see. He's paid a great price and he wants us to pay the price also. He gave them counsel. He's given us counsel today. He said, buy gold tried in the fire. Spiritual gold. He's not talking about the natural gold, but spiritual gold. All the spiritual things that make life rich, overflowing, like peace, love, joy, goodness, faith, assurance, confidence, security, and hope we can possess the abundant life if we take on Christ as our Lord and Savior. First Timothy 6 and 19 says, lay up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hope on eternal life. He wants us all to live with him, to be in the throne room with him, to be his. He's already made us an heir prepared for us. But we got to buy of him spiritual gold. And then he said, buy white clothes to be clothed. White clothes symbolize the righteousness of Christ. Pure righteousness that makes a person acceptable to Christ. Nothing else will make us acceptable. It's what Christ did on the cross and how he yes. imputes it unto us. Praise God. Colossians 3 and 10 says, put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And then God's counsel, Jesus, this was Jesus talking to the church in Revelation. He said, anoint your eyes with eye salve to see. We don't see clearly unless we're in the word, unless we're read before him, allowing him to reveal himself. If we're not true heart, to us. He said those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. Oh, we thank the Lord. He's made it possible. He made us that spirit man. He put his spirit within us. He made us in his image. Yes. And so we can worship him in spirit and truth. We can have eyes that's anointed with myself that we can see clearly what he wants us to do. He said be zealous his other counsel and repent. Be zealous us to be saved. And the scripture that we're going to go into, Revelation 3 and 20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Behold, pay attention, observe, I'm standing here at the door of your heart. I'm standing. Stand means to remain valid, to continue to be in effect. And oh, then God said he never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yeah. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah. He's continually in effect. And it means to stand, to be in a particular place, to be situated in, or positioned in a particular place. Oh, he's the omnipresent God. Wherever we go, we can't go nowhere that we can be without him. He's every place. So he's there. He's in a particular place. Here it says he's at the door. He's knocking on every heart. We can come up higher. Those that have not confessed him as your Lord and Savior. He said, let me in. I want to be your Lord. I want you to have life and that more abundantly. He's a great God. When we knock, it implies a need. It implies a 
presence. Someone is there. God is right there. He's knocking on our door. He wants to come in. He's making himself available. He's searching us out. He's not waiting for us, but he'll search us out. He'll touch our heart, no matter where we are. We don't have to be in the church, but he'll touch us wherever we are. He'll touch us, and he says,
that we can have gold. Our works, we can be turned out like pure gold, clean, if we go through our trials, if we go through our tribulations. We can look around. We see in our homes. Uh, what's in our world today? Divorce. Christian families divorcing. Worldly families divorcing. No difference. God says, I want a difference. He sanctified us. He wants to make us set aside for him to do the works that he would have us do, to be the witness that he would have us to be. Our children are out of control. Our children leave the church when they grow up after high school. Most of them leave the church. Many of them get involved in premarital sex. And they're taught right here. It's against your own body. God allows things to come up on you. If you do not keep yourself morally here. You might think you're getting away, but you're not getting away. Some of those diseases take years to incubate. And when you know anything, there it's full blown within you. But God said, keep yourself. And you can be protected from all the diseases of the world. Look around our world.
things that God has for us. He desires for us to have it, and he's prepared it for us. He wants to make us new creatures. He wants to change our corruptible nature into the incorruptible nature. He wants us to give us a new divine nature. He wants to satisfy the longing in our hearts. We are happy when we are in the presence, when we are doing what God says. There's a longing in our heart. He can satisfy it. He wants to look after us and, and care for us. He wants to talk and share with us. He wants to lead and guide us. He wants to strengthen and empower us. He wants to work all things down for our good. He wants to furnish us and fill us with that love, that peace, that joy. His nature, we got him on the inside. We can have all the attributes. In 1 Corinthians 1 and 9, he wants us to know that God is faithful by whom we were called unto fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And he wants us to know that he that began a good work in us is able to complete it. He wants us to know that we'll never be disappointed if we choose him as our Lord and our Savior. Get into his presence, saints. It's our opportunity now while the war blood is running in our bodies. While there's still time that we can repent, we can get into his presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He wants us to abide in him, and he wants to abide in us. He wants to give us that living water that'll cause us to be able to feed somebody else. He's not a selfish God. He doesn't want us to be selfish. He said, come and dine. Come and dine. Are you thirsty? You got to be thirsty. Pray that the Lord would give you a hunger and a thirst for righteousness. In Revelation 22, 17, it says, and the spirit and the bride says, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Come and dine with him. Overcome your limitations. Overcome your self-thoughts. Your ways. And depend on him. That's the place that God is calling us to. He wants us to be life givers. He wants us to rule and reign with him forever. So I'm exhorting the church today.
go before the Lord in prayer for all the needs. Father, we just thank you today.
tomorrow I have an uh, appointment with my doctor. Uh, I don't know what they're going to, you know, whatever plans they have, I, I don't know. Uh, now, when I was in the hospital, hooked up to the uh, machinery and whatnot, you know, you have 55 to 60 heartbeats a minute. And they figured that mine dropped way down because the machine kept going off. Bing, bing. And, you know, I was down to 45 beats a minute. And uh, so they figured that it dropped below that, you know, the last, the first Sunday last month. So, and, and you're not pumping enough blood to keep you going at that rate. So they're checking me, and what they want to do is to put in uh, a recorder, a little thing inside under my skin so that, because I wore the halter monitor and nothing happened doing that, but they want to see exactly what happens during that episode. Because right now, all they can do is ask me, and all I can tell them is, I don't know. I, all I know is I was standing here, next thing you know, I'm looking up. I don't know what happened. So they want to put one of those little recorders inside so that if I, when I if went out or if I have another episode, they will know precisely what goes on. And so uh, tomorrow I'll be going to the doctor at 1030 and must be something important because the doctor called me Friday. Make sure you are here. All right. Okay, so All right. so I'm going to find out what's the plan that they have going. But uh, meanwhile,